Hi, this is Nancy Herald, and welcome to my show, High Road to Humanity. In every episode, I tell you powerful true stories filled with great wisdom that you can use in your own life as you strive for a higher road to travel. My featured guests will have their own unique stories to tell that enlighten your mind and your soul. So kick back, relax, and learn the secret to success when you take the high road. Hi, this is Nancy Yearout, and welcome to High Road to Humanity. And I have a wonderful guest today. Lorna Byrne is here today, and she's joining us from Ireland. And welcome to High Road to Humanity, Lorna. Well, it's it's my pleasure, Nancy, to be on your show. You know, I'm I'm looking forward to to talking um, with you and telling you a little bit about myself. Um, and I suppose the little bit I can tell you now at the beginning is. You know, when when I was an infant, um, I would be lying in my cot and sometimes I would remember my mom, you know, fixing my blankets or doing something with me. Mm -hmm. But I'd be reaching up to try and touch the angels, but I didn't know they were angels. You have to remember that. It never dawned. Well, it wouldn't. I was only an infant in the cot. Yeah. you know, the angels have been there all my life and I, I see them physically. You know, right. as I see you on the screen now, you see mm-hmm. me physically, um, but I see the angels that that way as well. And I say when I was maybe two, two and a half, um, I think the doctor at the, around that time, the doctors told my mom and dad that I was retarded. Yeah. And I wonder why would he have said that? Because you were looking up and reaching for the angels. Is that what caused that? I was going to ask you that. I I don't think so. I think it was mainly that um, my mom was observing me like every mother does their child, you know, their baby, Mm -hmm. you know, they're always worried something is wrong. And I didn't actually start to talk to I maybe two and a half going on three, and I think that's what. what ah, happened. okay. You know, okay. and you know when a doctor tells parents your your child is is retarded, it's kind of you know you're put to the back of the class, all that kind of thing. You're not included in in things at all. Um, but when I was about two and a half, I was playing in front of the fire, um with my brother Christopher yes and to me that was just normal you have to remember just right because sometimes I would have seen him as an infant in my mom's arms but I didn't question anything and of course I was seeing the angels as well and and communicating with them and that day in front of the fire it was you know we were playing with blocks that um, my dad had made for us. And I'm making the story as short as I can. No, take your time. I want the audience to know that Christopher had died as a baby. Yeah. Um, and so you're in the, here you are a child and you're in, in the fireplace and you're playing with your brother, yeah, not yeah. realizing that he has passed. No, it, it, of course I, I wouldn't. Um, I, I was very, very young. And it was while we were playing with the blocks, it was like our hands touched and it was like as if his hand went into mine or mine went into his. And there was just such, it's hard to describe it, love and sparks everywhere, you know, in that in that way. And I know I laughed and, and it was at that time. And I know I didn't put everything into angels in my hair. But at that time, the angels told me they were angels and I was to keep it a secret and say nothing to anyone. And my brother, who was actually older than me while playing with them in front of the father, his age would change. Okay. um, That he was a soul and he had died before I was born. He actually died at 10 weeks. Okay. You know, and, and there was so many things with him as as a child. And I know I haven't written about them all, but one I do love it was when the cat had kittens and I was having breakfast, you know, at the table. My mom had given me some toast and, yeah, you know, 
there was a surprise out in the shed for me. Well, it was part of the house, part of the cottage kind of thing. And I just saw him running across the room, you know. He knew. And he knew. And I followed him, you know, and, and he lit up the way because in that kind of, it was like a workshop, you know, it smelt of oil and grease and all that kind of thing. And it was pitch black, no, no electricity in there, no light at all, except a tiny little window that actually let in, you know, really no light at, at all. And, you know, he showed me um, the kittens and there was three black and one black and white. And, and it was on that occasion in, in the sense of, how would I say, you know, the mother cat got up and stretched and, and all of that. And, and she jumped out the window oh. and, and I went to run after her and I realized Christopher wasn't coming with me. And I stopped and I asked him without words, because a lot of the time I would speak without words, mm -hmm. you know, why was he not coming? Right. And and he just said he, he couldn't break that bond between my mom and himself that love you know and if he went outside it would be like breaking it until you know. i'm cutting this short until my mom was ready in a sense to to leave right you know? I, yeah you know i read in the book and i i just since you're talking about this i wanted to bring this up you know you talk about people who have lost children um through uh, whether they just, you know, uh, the pregnancy just didn't go to full term or they uh, had an abortion. But what really caught me was you, and I want you to talk about it if you would. You said, and I've heard this before, but I want to hear what you have to say, that the children are still around the mother. That, you know, and that's what Christopher, and that's what, you know, Christopher was still around your mom until she was ready to let go. So would you talk about that a little bit? So maybe it kind of comforts the mothers a little bit. Well, what I would say to every mother and every father as well. Yes, ma'am. Um, if, you know, you even have a miscarriage, you know, or, or your child is, is you know, stillborn or, or dies shortly after or, or like Christopher, you know, was sent home, you know, by the doctors healthy, but my mom knew something was wrong. Mm -hmm. and, and mothers have that instinct. They they know because they've had carried this little being, you know, in their womb, you know, and inside their body was part of them. Right. That, so the connection is really strong. Um, and I would say to every mother, you know, if you have never named that little soul, remember it chose you to be its mother. Right. You know, and, and it's there to help you all through your life. And, and those little souls often, you know, come and go all of the time. And um, I always remember, well, I actually remember lots of women that would say, you know, Lorna, I, I had so many miscarriages, you know, I, I lost my babies, sometimes at three months, sometimes at four, four months, sometimes it was, you know, six weeks or, or even less in that, in that way. Um, and I would always say, you know, you should name that little baby. What did you feel it was, a boy or a girl? Right. You know, give it a name because that little soul is in and around you because every mother even with miscarrying a baby, it couldn't stay. But the thing is to remember, it loves that mom unconditionally. You know, you might feel, well, why did it go? But it came to give that mom love. And, and during that stage, even that mom, you know, loved that little soul. So right. it's like continue to love that little soul. Right. And, they're not dead. That's the amazing thing. Like, you know, I've often watched women and they might have four or five little souls around them. You know, they're no longer teeny tiny. They have, in a sense, grown a little bit. They're showing themselves as children. And I always remember sometimes a mother would say, they're so grateful 
for those souls coming, even though they couldn't stay, because now I have Mary or John. Mary or John couldn't come right until they came and and left. You know, so I yeah. think mothers should try and um and I know it's hard because sometimes a mother will say, Oh, it has torn me apart and I still haven't got a child yet. You know, a child still hasn't. But you do, but you actually do. You do, do. yes. And And that's an amazing thing. I wanted to say one more thing that you mentioned in the book uh, that I thought was interesting about this subject. You said that the soul knew before it even came in that it wasn't going to be born. And that really got me. I thought, okay, that made sense. Because then maybe there was a little more comfort if the mother and father knew that. Yeah, but you know, with every soul, you know, again, you know, every single pre- pregnancy, you know, at the moment of conception, the soul is there, the guardian angel is even there, and it already knows whether it's going to stay or not. Right. You know, Lorna, I didn't get to read your bio. Amazing. <laughs> I know it is amazing. There's so much stuff you guys were going to talk about today. I guys, I want you to make sure you share this show with people because it's such an honor to have Lorna on the show today and answer some of these questions. But I want to read her biography because they didn't have a chance. So sit back and relax for a minute and I'll tell you a little bit about Lorna. She's been seeing and talking to angels since she was a baby, as she said. Now that her family is raised, she talks openly about what she's learned. She lives quietly in rural Ireland, and she is the author of eight books, you guys, including the international best-selling Angels in My Hair, and that's what we're talking about today. And it's so cool because this book, after I believe it's the 15th year anniversary, is coming out March the 16th, 2023. There's going to be a special bonus chapter in the new book. So I'm going to have to get it. But I just want you to say that uh, I want to also say that she's written a message of hope from the angels, love from heaven. Her books have been translated into 30 languages, uh, published in 50 countries. Lorna is the founder of Lorna Byrne Children's Foundation, raising over 600,000 for vulnerable children and young people. And I just wanted to get that out today and say, give you a little bit of who you are. Isn't it crazy that here they think you're like not with the program and you have written all these books. I mean, does your family just go, oh my goodness, we really screwed up. At times, I don't know what to say when someone says something, something like that, because I'm, I'm only just me. I I still only can, can be me as, as such. And, and 15 years have passed and it's kind of, wow. You know, and and to me, it's it's about helping others, and mm-hmm. you know that's what I hear back all of the time. Someone has read Angels in My Hair, you know, or one of the other books. It could be even a child, it could be a teenager, a young woman, a young man, or or an elderly person, and it seems to change their what what words do some of them use? Comforting. It's comforting. Uh, it's comforting, but it. For some of them, it changes the way they look on life in a positive right. way. And then sometimes I could be in another country and, and a stranger come up to me, you know, and, and not even say their name or anything. They they just say, I recognize you. You're Lorna. You saved my life. And off they walk. Oh, that's my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Now, you do have some healing abilities, don't you? Well, I, I don't, I don't, um, what would you say, you know, go around saying that as, as such, um, because, you know, I always say it's not me that heals. Right, that's true. Uh, it's God that heals, you that's know, right. I, I'm just the, the servant or the instrument the vessel, you know, right. in that, in that way. Um, and and people do get healed and, and others don't. And I always give out to God and, and wish he would heal everyone. But it's hard for a mom or a dad or, or a sibling to understand why their loved one wasn't healed. But maybe it was their time to go, you know, um, for the physical body to die. But we have to remember our loved ones don't die. They're very much alive. 
Right. Now you've seen, I mean, you talk so much in the book. There's so many questions I have for you. I guess one is, as we talk about death, you saw the angel of death. You talk about it in the book when your friend Mark in the department store was going to pass. This was when there was so much unrest in Ireland and you went through that. A couple of things I wanted to ask you about that time. When you talk in the book that everything had a gray cast to it. And when I read that, it reminded me of the COVID-19. And I wanted to know, do you, did you see that at that, the same kind of a gray cast around things when that happened as well? Well, I, maybe I wouldn't put it in those exact words, but. Okay. Yes. It was like, you know, a heavy, a heavy kind of cloud coming down on us all. We, a, a depression and, and people in a sense, trying to see the light through the, through the cloud and, and you can say that grayness. And, and I thought one thing was wonderful that so many people did, you know, what would you say, burst that darkness or that yes. light around them. And they saw the light and they saw things that, you know, under other circumstances, they would never have noticed. What you did know, the angels say, I guess? I'm yeah. sorry? another part of life they they saw another part of life. what I, and I didn't mean to interrupt you what did the angels say about that time about the COVID what did they say to you um she was I you know I always thought that was way in the future oh I never thought I'd be here for it okay and, you know even what's happening today in the world like back many years ago people asked the question you know about war and I said mm -hmm. you know the third war third world war has already started and we're still in it and I know we can get out of it you know and that's why I would ask people to to pray for you know the leaders of of the world because what one other thing I was shown in the future was that the leaders were finding it hard to make the right decisions because they were basing everything on you know material things right and and we have to start thinking of you know compassion and hope and love and empathy for the human being and for nature mm -hmm. because we are all part of nature right you know Lorna I see a okay this is what I see okay I see the future and I see like 12 wise people and they are running the show and it's not about money. It's not about stuff. It's about love, compassion. Do you, that's what I see. That's what I think. What do you think? Yes, we, we can, we can do it. I have written about, you know, different futures that I have been shown good and bad. So I, I mainly always talk about the good ones, you right? Know, where we make this world like a little glimpse of heaven, right? You know, where children, where, where we all become so spiritually connected, you know, the human body intertwines with the soul, you know, we don't get sick anymore. Right. And, and, you know, school children aren't just in a classroom, they're outside. Mm -hmm. And I have talked about the children crossing the river without a bridge. Watch out of water, deep water, you know. And, you know, I have talked about where every country starts to grow its own food, mm -hmm. okay? And what's left over, what that country doesn't need. This is the part I love. It gives it for free and transports it and everything to the country that is in need. Right. Or no food is sold anymore. It you know so starvation. Everything is is gone, and that's why we. What would you say? The whole planet is renewed. Right. Yeah, I always think you know why do we pay for water? You know, it's the craziest thing. If you really think about it, it's like, why do we pay for that? It's absolutely ridiculous how we live and how we function. All right. I want to get into it. I, I'm, I think it's going to happen. I think we're, the vibration is raising. Do you see it? 
Do you feel it? It is, it is people are becoming of all ages more spiritually aware, more open, mm -hmm. um, and and believing that there has to be more to life. And I would have to say to you, yes, every single human being has a guardian angel, regardless of anything of what you may think of someone else there's a guardian angel right there with that person right. and, and they have a soul that spark of light of god and that's the part of you you cannot kill or destroy in any way but the human part of us fight the spiritual part we we, we have been conditioned to believe that life is all about material things right you know, about taking and, and not sharing, you know, the, the love and the compassion and the hope has been, what's the word the angels are using? Um, I have to smile, trotted on. Oh, God. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. Yeah. Trotted on in that, in that way. So we have yeah. been, been put down. So we do have to bring more love into the world. You know, these are the things you cannot buy. You cannot buy that's right. Them. That's right. Compassion, empathy, all happiness, joy. You know, lots of people believe. You know, if I only had a million, if I only had right. this, that. But you have to have love to bring yeah. happiness. Yes, and you are pure love, but we have kind of locked that love away, right? Because of fear, and we could turn fear into strength, right? You know, I teach everybody on the audience to connect with God, to bring the light in, to bring the light up from Mother Earth, to connect, because that's what fills us up. That's That way we don't want the material things because we are fulfilled. And as you're talking, and I'm thinking about this, you know, uh, it gets to a point where you have to let go. It's really interesting. They say, let go, let God. And that's where I'm at right now, because I'm like, oh, I want this to happen and I want this to happen. But I've learned that I need to just sit down and relax and let the universe handle it for me. And then the money comes, the love comes, everything works out if we just chill and trust and believe in something bigger than ourselves, Lorna. Yeah, in, in in one way, the only way I can explain for myself is um, none of this was my plan. <laughs> That's the way I'll put it. I agree with that. <laughs> even, even, as, even as a child, I just went whatever way God and the angels said I was to go. Wow. You know, I'd be walking across the fields and they said, you know, head over that direction. You did. I would just go that. And that's what I say to everyone. I, I don't have, you know, this thing in my head of a destiny or a career or whatever you may call them. You just went with the flow. That's not fair. That's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I find it hard to understand humanly why human beings have this that, you know, where's my destiny? What's my purpose? They have never existed for me. Gotcha. Wow, you've always lived in this. <laughs> That's so awesome. That's so awesome. All right, there's a couple of things I want to talk about today. One, you started to talk about our guardian angel, and I want to address that because, um, and I can only speak for myself. I tell everybody you do have one. Mine's standing right here. I work with her every day. She's helped me. I've learned to trust her. It's taken me a while. It takes a while because I can't see like you can. I have to say, I'm a little bit envious because I can't see. So it's taken me a while. But now we, you know, we work together and I ask her. But the cool thing is, what I want you to talk about is that everybody has one. And we just need to learn how to communicate with them. Because if we don't ask, we don't get, right? Well. Talk about this, Lorna. It, it, it's like if it's. It's just really to acknowledge you have a guardian angel. And I, I suppose in, in some religions, children acknowledge it when you're a child. You know, you're, you're slightly aware of it, but humanly that's put down in that, in that way. So it's like now an awakening. Yes. You know, to acknowledge that you have a guardian angel yes. and every human being does. And I, the one thing I love about all angels, especially the guardian angel, because that's the one angel that can never leave you for one second 
all other angels can come and go and even the souls of loved ones or even ans the souls of ancestors you know can come come and go but your guardian angel is the gatekeeper of your soul it can never leave you not even for one second so even if you're some people have said to me even when we're in the bathroom and i said yes your guardian angel is right there it doesn't look on us in the way we look on ourselves humanly right. Right. It loves us unconditionally, you know, and to your guardian angel, to your guardian angel yourself, Ness, left to pronounce your name for me. Nancy. Nancy, you know, you're its number one. It doesn't have eyes or anything for any other human being, only you. And to your guardian angel, you are unique. You're beautiful. You're perfect. Mm -hmm. And there is no one else in the world like you. Your guardian angel was assigned to you before your soul even came to earth when when your mother conceived. So they God were, God decides or he just they decide or how does that work? I mean, how do you how do you know who you get? <laughs> when when you, all, you already knew everything about your parents, but it's like as if you know, when you're conceived as an infant, you know, it's taken away, but some some infants are left with some little memories. Mm -hmm. And that's again to help to guide you through life. Right. But I always say if we acknowledge we have a guardian angel and a soul, you know, the angels, your guardian angel again is always teaching you and can call in a soul of a loved one just to because you know when someone you have known all your life you know the smell of them you sense them you know mm -hmm. you know you have them in the door mm -hmm. so when when a soul that has lived in a human body it carries all of that you know so we recognize god i felt my granny was here yeah you know? Yeah. Why did this happen? You know, in, and that is trying to get a message across to you to give you confidence and belief in yourself. Yeah. And your guardian angel is a great teacher. Mm -hmm. You know, your guardian angel, I, I know it happens billions of times around the world, um, might say to you, you know, oh, I'd love a cup of tea or whatever, but you don't get up to get the cup of tea. Or in a sense, you know, my guardian angel might say, no, I'm going to take up this pen and start writing with it. But you could be, you know, saying, oh, no, I don't want to write anything. So you're lazy. You don't. Right, decide. right. <laughs> they told me to use the word lazy. Um, so you don't respond, but they want you to respond to as much as possible. Because then when, you know, when you do respond to something that is important that they're guiding you with, that they're trying to get you to make the right decision. And um, you go, yippee, <laughs> I did it all myself. And right. That, and, and that's they like that. They love, they love that. Yeah. They, that's you don't so have to give your guardian angel acknowledgement in that sense that it has helped you. You know, if, if your guardian angel just loves you so much and never, never gives up on you at all yeah and that's true because my angel's been i do angel cards and uh i keep getting creative writing because i'm writing a book right now and they keep pushing me i keep getting the cards so they're like come on nance write today come on and every time i get the card it's like that's them saying yeah get off your duff and go write. <laughs> it's true it's true hey i want to talk about archangel michael say, say that again. archangel michael yeah this guy back here you know he hangs around. He hangs around with me a little bit here and there. Um, I, I see your picture and everything. And our yeah. angel is um, just an an incredible angel, and I love the way he can be with, with millions of people all at the same time. Right. You know, to me, that's that's incredible, and and many many people would say, you know, oh my guardian guardian angel is Archangel Michael. And I have to say no. <laughs> right. He's he guards everybody. <laughs> he belongs to everybody, you know, in, in that in that sense. Um, but if you're feeling that Archangel Michael is special to you and is helping you, then he is. It's like don't doubt it. 
Right. But I would say you have to remember as well. Um, what would because your guardian angel is the gatekeeper of your soul. Um, it's like the God. Uh, what way could I say it? Your guardian angel has already asked for permission for Archangel Michael to come. To come in. I yeah. see. I see. Now you started seeing him when you were young. Oh yeah, very, very young. I was. Can you talk about it a little bit? Or and he always came differently. I mean, it took a while. Oh, yes. Yeah, talk yeah. about that. Um well, the first time I saw him on many occasions for the first time was in my bedroom in Old Kamenum. And and I was, you know, I was only a young child. So I this angel was a little different and I was kind of, mm, you know, that way a child, you know, a little bit nervous, a little bit afraid. And yet I, I felt his gentleness, you know, and sometimes he would just smile at me. He never said a word at first, <laughs> you know, never said a word. Oh he my would, gosh. He would just appear in this little bedroom that was quite dark, even during the day, you know, um, and he would just stand there. But I knew he had a power. He was different from the other angels. Um, and I didn't quite understand that. And and when he kind of came closer, you know, I got to know him. And and it took quite, you know, many, many years before he turned around and, and told me who he was, you know. Um, but one way I would explain to people, you know, you could have a whole load of soldiers millions of soldiers and you could hide the general or whoever the boss would be in among them and and you would know who that was you know when you look at a picture you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Different. um but i love archangel michael because you know he's so kind and so gentle you know and there's so much love coming from him and yet he's so powerful i have never seen him what would you say, the way human life goes on, you know, a general or someone higher up, you know, cutting someone down. He's he always, never, yeah. He never does that even with the angels wow. that he's in charge of. And that's all the angels. How many angels are there? What do you think, Lorna? Oh, I I, I don't know. Um, all this I know is that... Um, Angels are creatures created by God long, 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 long ago. And I suppose mankind has put them on a pedestal over time. Uh. But I, I, I love this part where the angels have all of us on a pedestal. You know, I, I do. I do love that. And that is why they help us so much. You know, um. As I would say to people, you you know when when you were making a decision and you knew you should have gone left, you knew, but but you were asking you know for advice from everybody and you were getting it, but there was this nagging in your head all of the time, whatever way it was. Mm -hmm. But because of fear, you ignored that spiritual advice from your guardian angel, mm -hmm. and and you went the way. You went right instead. And you know, many a times people say, I knew I should have gone the other way. And you're kind of kicking yourself. Mm -hmm. Well, again, I would say, you know, every time, no matter how tiny it is, and you know, you should go left or right, kind of do it. You know, it's it's like even even if, if you know, you should move that glass of water in on the table because it's going to spill. And right. then it spills. Right. You get the feeling. Oh, and you're saying, oh, I knew that. Why didn't I move it in? Like, why didn't I do yeah. that? Yeah. And, you know, so they're teaching us all of the time. So that was someone's guardian angel telling them to move that cup of tea in or that glass, you know. Right. Don't get up and swing your bag. But the other thing about your guardian angel is that it never asks you to do anything wrong. He right. never asked you to be mean or selfish or to steal or to hurt anyone or even to hurt nature. And one way your guardian angel helps you is that when you're doing something wrong, it helps to give you 
that guilty feeling, you know, that's niggling at the back of your mind. Yeah, like, don't do it. <laughs> you know, you know not to, you know. Mm. Um, but I, I suppose as we grow, we get good at putting that guilty feeling. We, we make it so low that we can barely hear it or, you know, but it's just niggling there. I see. It's like to just open up yourself spiritually and say, here, I'm going to enjoy life. I think the more you open up, the more you connect with the angels. That's how I feel anyway. I wanted to ask you, you know, because you can see them and you talk in the book about little angels and angels with wings and angels without wings. And there's just so many different ones. And I and I want you to correct me if I'm wrong, but if I'm working on a project and I need or if I'm going on a trip, I'll say, OK, I want the travel angels to come in and help me. OK, so talk about this kind of a thing is what um, I'm. Yeah, I, I, that's one thing I love about your guardian angel. Again, it's the one that can never leave you for one second. But if, if you ask, you know, that you want an employ, uh, unemployed angel or, or you want, you know, a, an angel to help you on your journey, on your travels, mm -hmm. you know, your guardian angel will have that angel in there with you straight away and sometimes can have umpteen of them. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing exams, but I have met many students and I always have to laugh at this. I think it's so funny. You know, they would say, Lorna, I've called in the angels to help me with my exams. <laughs> I know I would pass them, you know, and I would look at them. I said, the angels, yes, they're in and around you to help you. But are you doing your work? And then they look at me. But I asked the angels in to help me. Surely I don't have to do the work. <laughs> they, they can assist. To, so they assist. They assist. I said, you have to do your study and they will help you and they'll help you to, you know, what would you say? Put things into plan, you know, little um, reminders that trigger a memory, you know, in that in that way to help you. Um, I always think that's very funny. I, I do think sometimes the student might be just, you know, a bit young to understand. I understand you your work. Well, it makes me think in the book you talk about when you bought the material for your wedding dress and it was so expensive at the time. And you say the angels hit the tag. So they do stuff like that, right? Yes, they they do all the time. And, and not just for me, but they do it for everyone. Right. You know, sometimes when, when you say, you know, how did that happen? You know, I got this at that price. You know, how did it go down? It wasn't just the sale. Right. How come I was attracted to it in that way. Right. And even sometimes someone would tell me, you know, a house they were buying, you know, and they only had so much. and. You know, they put in their bid and they put in like, you know, a, a little story on, on why this house was meant, you know, why they feel this, have, but they only have this price, mm -hmm. this is the money. And, and that was their guardian angel or Archangel Michael or a soul of loved one that had come in telling them to do this. And um, because you can be sure that the owner was being prompted okay you know and again the owner has to what would you say say yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I've heard so many stories where that has happened yeah here's decided I'm giving it to them not the ones that are given the higher price right it wasn't about that isn't that interesting it wasn't yeah I love know? it and, and I've even heard that someone going to buy a car and you know, and, you know, searching for, and they're all too expensive and they're, they're praying and saying, listen, I only have this one. And then one day they walk into a garage or a place or see a car and they say, this is what I have. I love that car there. Now, once it's not a Mercedes or something like that, you know, <laughs> but a family car. Good. Yeah, yeah. And, and the owner says, okay. I'll only make a small profit. But again, the owner or the manager was listening to their guardian angel. They were open spiritually to, to hear the voice, right. to, to give them the compassion and to do something good today. 
to give someone hope. You know, in your book, this really hit me. You talk about God appearing at as a young man at a, in a prayer group. And um, I wondered if you'd talk a little bit about that and if he's appeared to you after that. Um, yes, on, on other occasions, and I, I know in other books I have, you know, written a little. Um, I always remember that was a prayer group and it was a very big prayer group group at the time um, I I just you know I, I can see the room now even as I'm talking to you and the way all the chairs were in this circle right. you know and and you know when everybody went into silence and and God came into the room you know and touched me but touched others as well you know, and I suppose the sad part for me that day was that only one young man turned around out of all the people that God touched and acknowledged. He just said, you know, I can't remember the exact words now, but he felt God touch him. And God did. You know, and I was, I suppose, hoping that the others that I was shown that God had touched, you know, would have said so. And and in this world today, regardless of your religion, or even if you say you're not belong to any particular religion as such, um, we're kind of afraid to acknowledge God. I know. Why is that, we're, Lorna? We're, we're afraid because we, we think everybody's going to say we're mad or you're away with the fairies or, you know, you're, I, I don't know, why should we be, be afraid when, you know, we have a soul and the only thing I can say to you is God is real. Yes. Um, you know, and don't, don't wait till the last moment of when your human body dies and yeah. you're is that oops imagine, <laughs> yeah, you know, imagine the surprise <laughs> yeah, a lot of surprise you know oh in, lord in that, in that way it's it's kind of you know let the intertwining happen now let us start and i do believe we are at an awakening point yes yes we are you know yeah. you're gonna laugh at me lord but i gotta tell you something so yeah. i was what so the super bowl was like you know a couple of weeks ago and the coolest thing about the Super Bowl are the commercials. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right? Because they have the greatest commercials. But what the coolest thing was this year, they had two or three commercials celebrating Jesus. Wow. And I'd never seen that before. And it gave me hope that if they're going to put a commercial on about Jesus, finally, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's not so uncool to be with god you know what i mean i i i do and you know it is it is hard i i only know well a friend of mine that i met many years ago and and i only see her the odd time um like she she goes off and plays um what do you call you know cards and all that kind of thing and, and oh, she's yeah. gone, gone through a tough life but she and she's not Catholic, okay. you know. Um, she has such faith, and and in her sentences, even when playing cards or talking to someone, she will say, "Look, Jesus is looking after us. God is looking after us." She's no, no blocks, right? And and many people have said to her, you know you're incredible because you have so much faith. Gotta have faith. So, um, and yeah. again, it's for us to have faith and, and, and not to be afraid to say, I believe in God or, or too afraid to say, I believe I have a guardian angel or too afraid to say, I know I'm not flesh and blood, just mm -hmm. I know I have a soul as well. You know, mm -hmm. that spark of light of God because people look for the meaning of life yes so they're, they're saying what's the meaning of life yes it's to live life but you have a soul as well and it's yeah. not just living life because your soul 
you know, when the human body dies, the soul has everything of your human life. You know, so you don't die in that in that way. It's but I, I just can't wait when we start to allow that intertwining to happen. I, I just say it's like a plash. That's what I've been shown. So it's like a what? Like a plash. It's in you know, you know the way you um plash your hair. Okay, like like you're so, like you're braiding, you're braiding. Yeah. Or class, yeah, yeah. Okay, because we're you're you're you different. call it something different. I'm like what? It's something it's something different. Uh, and, and I have to smile because I was given that word as a child, the intertwining of the body and soul, and I just learned in the in the last six months that science has been using that word for a long, long time. You know, so it's it was um, lovely and surprising in that in that way. Um, it's but, coming yeah. together. It's finally starting to come yeah. together. The science yeah. and the spiritual. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I I do wonder if you 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 did talk about it a little bit. You talked about the awakening. I feel like I just I know you can't you don't have all the answers, Lorna, and neither do I. Oh, but I, I don't. Uh, but I'm still learning. Right, me too. And but I do learning. <laughs> right, but I too feel this is just me. I feel like in the next couple of years that the spiritual that more and more people will start to connect with God. That more and more people t- will realize that that is the fulfillment that they're looking for. Yes, it is. It is the fulfillment we're all looking for. Imagine if we allow that intertwining of the human body and the soul. You know, we won't need bridges. We won't need so many things that we have and our earth blossoms and in a sense i i know we do go to other other planets but the it's like when the intertwining happens some of us will stay here on earth and even god will say to us well do you want to come with me and i know i have written it in one of the books and we say no we'll stay here for another while yes you know because it's it's like you it'll know, be so beautiful so so beautiful but you will see things that you never saw before it's like those the children learning outside but they weren't learning with school books right they were seeing well some of the things i see already you know like the flowers you see you see sparks yeah. coming off flowers and things like yeah. that don't you and and, and they were actually yeah. learning about the grass they were fascinated about the grass and what was happening you know so imagine being able to see into the grass and see all of that life and light and see how much it's alive you know and even to be able to see down into the roots and everything like that fascinating you know we think we have learned everything and we haven't, no, nothing, not even close. I want to ask you, we got to get out of here in a couple of minutes, but I want to ask you if you feel like, because I do, and I want to know your feeling that our abilities, well, I've already, I can already say all of us are becoming more psychic, but all of us have way more abilities than we even know. Oh, yes. Ev- everyone does. I, I to hear people saying, you know, they don't see even one gift that they have. Oh, but, <laughs> but but we have loads of gifts. Yes. Absolutely loads, you know, and we shouldn't be running ourselves down in that way, but we can humanly, it's like the human part of us, you know, we don't listen to the spiritual part. So the human part of us is telling us that, well, I have to be as perfect as the greatest writer in the world, or I have to be is perfect as you know the greatest peacemaker or artist in the world you just got to be yourself you've just got to be you yeah because you're <laughs> unique you're unique and there's no one else in the world like you you know that's what god is telling you so your bit of art you shouldn't be copying anything of anyone else right it will be seen that things are being copied and and everything you read you can see they're all being copied every you know so many people are 
uh, doing pictures and copying from another, you know, so we're not seeing, we're only looking. Gotcha. And we're not hearing. We're not listening. We're not listening. I yeah. guess I only have one more question for you. Okay. <laughs> what a life you've had. I mean, what a life. And so where do you go from here? I mean, what what are you doing now? And, and where, what do you see yourself doing? Well, I, I really, that's all up to God. I don't see myself doing anything. See, I, just, I love it. I love I it. Go down, <laughs> down the path. Okay. I, I, I know I am writing a book with a scientist at the moment, and it's an editing oh, version. Oh, wow. I know oh. And and I know we have the children's charity and, you know, we have um, Sanctuary, a huge centre here in Ireland. So I, I do see people coming to Ireland from all around the world, you know, children, students, the, the whole lot. But I leave all that in God's hands. You know, I'd tell God I'll do my part. Yeah. <laughs> you know? but, but one thing God has always said to me, and that is, and has proven it to me so many times, is that Lorna, many are called, few are chosen, and very few of those few that are chosen say yes. So I am praying that more will say yes. You know, I agree. Um, because I cannot do this on my own. No. I'm only one. Yes. yes. In in that in that way. And it is about helping, helping others. You know, so I, I do loads of things and I do extreme cases. And I know I have spoken about one extreme case, Noah, you know, a young boy who came to an event in Germany. And I think there was 700 to 1,000 people there. And I always remember him walking in with his mom and, and, and someone else and saying to God, you know, will I go over to this this child? And I was told no. And I was kind of, you know, taken back. No. Um, so I just do what God says. I yeah. Him. And then the hall filled and the talk went on and came to questions and answers. And loads of people asked questions. And then the young boy stood up. And I just looked. Um, I just said, yeah, what, what is it? And he just said, Lorna, I don't have a question. I just want to let you know, my guardian angel is my best friend. Oh, my goodness. And that was absolutely beautiful. But the moment he stood up and I gave him the nod, the whole room went silent. You couldn't, no one coughed, no one sneezed, no one... You would have heard a pin drop if a pin had been dropped because the audience got a shock when this young boy stood up because this young boy had, you know, some kind of special netting hat on his head with things attached to it. And he had other tube in his neck here and a machine. You know, he was sick, right. really sick. And it was like, you know, every head was turned in his direction, but nobody's head moved. The wow. silence was unbelievable. And never mind the angels around him and his guardian angel, I'll skip all that part. But then he said, which I think shocked the audience again, and it's something we take for granted. He just said, Lorna, will you ask God for the gift of life? And I just said to him, I will, but I only can ask on your behalf. Right. We all forget we have the gift of life. And I know you have even forgotten you have the gift of life. You know, it is incredible that we have this gift. It is. You know. Um, Don't make me cry, Lorna, come on. <laughs> you know, I, I, won't, I won't tell his, his parents have given me permission, which I haven't done it yet. To talk to, about it. To talk yeah. about it and to write the story, you know, because uh, I would have loads more to tell. 
You know? Well, you're right, though. You're right, because we, um, and I don't want to interrupt your train of thought, but we have this precious gift and we don't honor it. Yeah, we, we don't, you know, in in any way whatsoever. It's when it's been taken from us, we realize and then we give out in that sense. But I did write a children's book, you know, and we called it after Noah. He got an extra two years and that's oh. a huge story. Um, my guardian angel, my best friend. I love it. That's fantastic. So they they were Noah's words. That's fantastic. I think we'll leave the audience with that today. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for coming on the show. You guys, Angels in My Hair is her book. You got another one coming out, but you're not going to tell us what it is yet. Is that right? Well, it's I'm writing with a scientist, so it's all his um, theories. He he as I have met many scientists along the way, and they have always said. You know, Lorna, we believe every word you say, but we can't say it because we <laughs> right. discredit it, you know. And then I had one scientist that came up to me one day and said, Lorna, um, if any scientist ever says to you that something is impossible, they're not a scientist, you know. So the the scientist theories on he has read angels in my hair and it has uh. He's had the courage, you know, to write what has blown his mind away. Very good. Very good. So that's coming out. Well, I have to thank you so much for coming on the show today. And thank God you. bless. Yes. You guys, we're going to get out of here for today. This is Nancy Earl. This is High Road to Humanity. Everybody take care and God bless. <laughs>